Okay, so welcome. My name is Cassandra. And this is foundational science setting the stage for success with a focus on grades um, three through five. Sorry, I'm just kind of moving the um, participant thing around. So um, what we're going to talk about in this session is kind of the non-content science stuff that we do in the classroom and that we um, kind of want to focus on specifically for grades three through five. Oops. So a little bit about me. My name is Cassandra Armstrong. Um, I'm a curriculum writer and professional development specialist at IMSA just like um, all of the other presenters today. Um, my personal kind of interests and focus are on K-12 STEAM learning. I uh, was a high school science teacher um, before I came to IMSA uh, in the city of Chicago. And I taught for a couple of years in Michigan as well um, before I moved to Chicago. And I kind of taught everything. I taught um, freshman earth and space science. I taught senior AP biology, chemistry, physics, kind of, I, I kind of went through the gamut. Um, I also want to apologize for my, my couch backdrop. Um, we had a fridge delivery situation this morning that no one was expecting. So I'm, I'm in my son's bedroom. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of a little bit about me. Um, when I first came to IMSA, I started working on specifically third to fifth grade NGSS um, stuff. So this is kind of near and dear to my, my heart at IMSA. Um, I recently finished working on a preschool um, STEAM curriculum. And I'm excited to kind of move back into some middle school, high school stuff. So yeah, K-12 STEAM, specifically science, is, is kind of my passion. So some objectives for this session, um, we're going to look at the three dimensions of science as they apply to the next gen science standards. Um, if you've heard of the phrase three dimensional learning, basically the next gen science standards have taken these three um, kind of big parts of science and what it means to be a scientist and put them into these three different dimensions and then created the next gen science standards by kind of marrying the three um, dimensions. We're going to look at the progression of science skills and knowledge as they build from third grade to fifth grade. Um, so basically where are students coming in at third grade and what should they, what kind of skills should they have when they leave fifth grade? Um, and then we're going to work collaboratively on some jam boards to identify ways to provide learners with opportunities to build a strong foundation in science and STEAM. So again, um, what are our students coming in with? What are they leaving with in that three, three to five um, span? So the biggest resources for this presentation, the first one is this book, A Framework for K-12 Science Education. If you don't have it, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I use it um, almost daily. I'm not going to say daily, but almost daily. Um, it's kind of the book that uh, is the foundation for the Next Generation Science Standards, which is our other main resource, nextgenscience.org. Um, you can buy it, but you can also download it for free from the website as a PDF, I believe, um, but I, I use it all the time. I'm going to refer to it constantly throughout the presentation. So again, this is a quote from the book. It's one of the first pages. Um, it's kind of the why. Why did we need to change the way science was being taught in the United States. Um, because obviously this is all fairly new. The next gens are, I don't know, 10 to 15 years old. Um, it's kind of a new idea. A lot of us um, who are teaching science are having to teach it in a way that is very different from the way that we learned it, um, which is can be strange. Um, so why? Why did why did we need to change the way that that science was being taught? So I'm just going to read through this, and obviously you can read it as well. 
The overarching goal of our framework for K-12 science education is to ensure that by the end of the 12th grade, all students have some appreciation of the beauty and wonder of science, they possess sufficient knowledge of science and engineering to engage in public discussions on related issues. They are careful consumers of scientific and technological information related to their everyday lives. They are able to continue to learn about science outside of school. They have the skills to enter careers of their choice, um, including but not limited to careers in STEM. So this is like a really kind of, I'm going to just say grown up. Um, kind of idea is that the whole idea of science education is to, by the end of students' educational career, they have um, kind of these ideas of what it means to learn science or be a scientist. Um, and you'll notice none of those say can recite all of the organelles in a cell or can list all the elements on the periodic table or you know there's there's none of these have anything specific to do with content um not to say the content's not important but um that's that's not why we teach science we don't teach science so that students can walk away knowing ha having all of these things memorized um this is why we teach science and and I think we have all seen over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, there are some of these things that are, are clearly were not being done because there are a lot of um, public discussions going on um, that are not really scientific in ways that people think they are. Um, and, and that's nobody's fault because people don't have the background knowledge um, to engage in those types of discussions or um, are careful consumers of science and technological information related to their everyday lives. How many people, I'm sure, I mean, I know I've fallen for it, have, you know, come victim to a Facebook, Facebook article share um, where you're reading something and you're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then you look at the source and you're like, oh goodness gracious. Um, so the, you know this is this is why we teach science, and I just think it's interesting to take that step back um, and be able to kind of remember that um, th this is what we what our end goal is because we want we just want our students when they enter enter the workforce or college or whatever they plan to do um, that they have the basic scientific um, literacy to be. Uh, successful. So um, kind of going the other way, then what are our guiding principles? So as we learn science, um, what were the main ideas that kind of shaped the next gen science standards, the science and engineering practices, the cross cutting concepts and the dis, um, disciplinary core ideas? So the first one is that children are born investigators. And that is just so true. And I always kind of would say that like, yeah, kids ask a lot of questions. Kids are really curious. Um, but I have a two and a half year old and a five month old. And I like, it's kind of like, I, I had to see it to really believe it. Um, they are both so curious. You know, my, my five month old is just stares at everything that's new to her. We went on, it was nice out here, um, a couple nights ago and we went on a walk and it was our first time kind of going on a walk where we carried her outside of a stroller and her head was just like all over the place. So curious about this, you know, world around her. Um, and then yeah, so it's just this idea that, you know, children are born with this curiosity and this, um, you know, want to know more about the world around them. But then as they enter school, and, you know, this is, again, no one's fault, it's just the way it was always been done. We, and even as parents, you know, we start to hammer in the, into our students and our kids this idea of right versus wrong. And what that ends up doing is making our kids not want to embrace that natural curiosity and um, that 
born investigator kind of inherent thing because they're so afraid of being wrong that they would rather not try and just wait to learn the right answer or wait to be told the right answer than take risks. And that is, um, I, I don't know, this might be a bold statement and I should probably think about it before I say it, but I think that might be the number one issue in science education um, right now is that our children, our, our kids, our students are afraid of being wrong. And that, um, that really affects their then willingness to take chances um, and everything like that, which, you know, science, scientists are wrong all the time. So you have to be, um, you know, ready to be wrong if you want to be a scientist or an engineer. Failing is like 90% of the job, um, but it's having, you know, being able to take risks and, and all of that thing, all of those things, sorry. So yeah, um, in the chat, um, Krista said, I see that daily. Yeah, I mean, it was like, the most discouraging part of being in the classroom, I think, is just my students' complete unwillingness to try for fear of failure. So um, part of the part of the NGSSs and uh, all of this is we want to embrace that born investigator quality in our students and not, you know, beat it out of them um, with this right versus wrong ideology. Um, yes, but fail first attempt in learning. I love that. Um, because yeah, I mean, students are just so afraid of being, of being wrong. Um, so then the next guiding principle is that a focus, we have a focus on core ideas and practices. So basically, um, there are these practices, these science and engineering practices that all scientists and engineers do. Um, it's kind of like, I think of it as like an upgraded um, scientific method. We ask questions, we design investigations, we do all of these things um, as scientists, um, but a lot of times that doesn't cross over to the classroom. We, we just tell our students, here's the science, here's your vocab, here's your you know diagram to label, things like that, which is the core ideas part, but we're not getting to the practices. Um, so we want our students not just to be learning science, but we want them to be doing science. Um, the next idea is that understanding develops over time. So this is um, kind of one of the fundamental ideas that we're gonna be looking at today. So this is specific for a three to five grade band. Um, but I also did this presentation right before this for 6-8, and I will be doing it this um, afternoon for K-2. And so if you can feel free to look at the um, resources for either. Um, but if you look at the downloadable materials for this session, you will see a uh, the diagrams of, of what we're going to work on for all the grade bands. So you see, you will see it and I'll show you I'll show you all what that is what what I mean by that um, in a minute but basically it's this idea that um, ask questions so the first science and engineering practice is um, ask questions and define problems. A kindergartner can ask a really valid um, scientific question. So can a 12th grader. A kindergartner's question is going to look different from a 12th grader's but it's still that same idea. So if a student makes it to high school without ever having asked a scientific question, we have failed this idea that we're trying to develop this these understanding of these things over time. So that's why what we're going to look at today are some of the um, like almost like a checklist, some of the goals by the end of fifth grade. You know, when that when students come in at third grade and when they leave at fifth grade, these are the kind of the skills and the things that they should be doing in the classroom. Um, let me check the chat really quick. Oh yeah, uh, some of the adults with some of the best intentions can can cause some of the you know biggest 
um, impacts in learning because the adults will see a student going off in the wrong direction and they think they're being so helpful by being like, oh no, 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 you don't do it like that, do it like this. And they're excited because they're helping um, and things like that. But it's, you know, that's, that's, is being detriment, detrimental because you're telling them they're wrong. Um, yeah, I had a, um, uh, in a, uh, what's it called? I'm blanking on the word, like a teaching assistant, um, para pro, thank goodness. Um, a para who constantly was doing that, like correcting the kids or showing them how to do something. And I'm like, no, you got to let them do it on their own. Like, I know, you know how to do it. I want them to know how to do it. Um, so yeah, I, I love that. It's, and yeah, it's okay to not be polished. Yeah, I really like that because you're doing this for the first time. It's not going to be perfect. Um, perfect. So then the next one says science and engineering require both knowledge and practice. That kind of goes back to the second one. Um, you can't have one without the other. You can you know, memorize all the science facts in the world and not be a scientist because you have no idea how to run an experiment or analyze data or argue from evidence. Um, but if you don't know any of the content, you're, but you can, you know, have a really good argument, that's not going to be as helpful if you don't know what you're arguing about. Um, and then the last two are where um, you personally come in. So the one the other main one of the main ideas of the next gens is to connect to students interests and experiences so basically this is where you get to use your knowledge of your students um, to make the next gen standards your own um, they're vague enough to where you know this is why we didn't just say okay here's your curriculum for kindergarten, here's your curriculum for third grade, here's your curriculum for high school biology, um, you know, day by day lessons, because that is not how it works. Anyone who's been in a classroom knows that you can plan the most intricate lesson plan in the world. And pretty much on a daily basis, it's going to go out the window five minutes after you start because something's going to go wrong or you know, it, it, things never go how, how you plan. And that's part of being a teacher, but knowing, um, knowing your students and really being able to connect to them personally um, is, is going to make this a personalized experience for you and your students. And I'm also going to say on this topic, um, it's also, your own interests and experiences. So what I mean by that is, you know, how I teach my third um, period class might be different than how I teach my fourth period class, just because of the students in it, the makeup, um, all of that stuff, but also how I teach, um, I see the name on my Zoom is Kate, so I'm going to use Kate. The way I teach and how Kate teaches might be extremely different as well, just because of our personality types. There is no one size fits all teaching. And that's one thing that I struggle with as a um, professional development specialist is sometimes it's really hard to work with a group of teachers because how everyone manages their classroom might be very different based on their own personalities. Teaching is so personal. Um, so it's not only connecting to our students' interests and experiences, it's also using your own personality and teaching style um, to convey the um, stuff that you're trying to teach. And then lastly, um, these standards were designed to promote equity. And um, I think the biggest example of that is in terms of materials. So none of these standards say, you know, know how to operate a microscope where like, I'm pretty sure when I first started teaching in Michigan, however many years ago, the Michigan standards before next gens came out, there were, they were like very specific, like operate a microscope was like a standard. Um, but what if the school doesn't have microscopes or what if they have, you know, one clunky microscope that has a broken lens out back? Um, that 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 can't that's very inequitable you can't expect a student who doesn't have those tools or a teacher who doesn't have those tools to then master that standard so these um standards are all vague to a point 
where you can still accomplish them without requiring any, you know, crazy lab equipment. Obviously, if you have, you know, uh, some microscopes for, you know, this is third to fifth grade, you might not be using, um, you know, advanced microscopes, but if you have like some hand lenses to enhance your student's experience in learning about something, then use them. That's fantastic. Um, so it's not saying you can't use this, you know, any kind of advanced technology, or if you have smart boards that you can use for data, um, or, you know, because of COVID, there's all these crazy, like virtual things now. Um, if you have it, use it. Anything you can use to enhance is great. Um, but these things all can be accomplished without anything, you know, super advanced. Whoops. So kind of going off of that, these are our three dimensions. We have our disciplinary core ideas, which is our, our content. That's our stuff. Our science and engineering practices, which is our what scientists and engineers do. And then our cross-cutting concepts, which are, our, I like to call them themes. Um, they're themes that you can find in all of the disciplines of science and beyond. So our science and engineering practices, um, like I said before, this is kind of like our enhanced scientific method. And anytime there's an and, it's science, then engineering. So scientists ask questions. Um, engineers define problems. And that's something that you can talk with, with your students. If you're doing a scientific investigation, you're going to need a scientific question. If you're doing an engineering design challenge, you're going to need to define the problem that that challenge is um, trying to solve. Even if it's something like a Rube Goldberg experiment, you know, Rube Goldberg's designs are complex designs to solve simple problems. So maybe the problem is we need to get the ball in the cup. That is an engineering problem right there. Um, scientists and engineers develop and use models all the time. Things that are too big or too small to see, you know, within the walls of your classroom, um, probably you will use a model for. Engineers build prototypes, which is a model. Um, planning and carrying out investigations. Again, that's kind of that whole method of try it, test, refine. Um, we always need to analyze and interpret data, whether it's mathematical data, quantitative data, qualitative data, um, an engineering design that's going to be essentially, did it work, did it not? Um, using mathematics, my, my math teacher friends don't, don't particularly enjoy when I say this, but I used to tell all of my science students, the reason we learn math is so that you can succeed in science. Um, you, we, you know, you learn all of these things in math that is also kind of like what we've been talking about here. Like, when am I ever going to use this? Well, I can pretty much tell you where you're going to use all your math stuff in science. Um, and we can kind of come back to that in a little bit too. Um, constructing explanations and designing solutions. So that's kind of our, our end goal, um, which relates directly to engaging an argument from evidence. Again, this is something that can be done in kindergarten. A kindergartner can say, I think X because I saw Y. Um, now, when a 12th grader is doing it, it's going to look different, but it is possible to start in kindergarten through second grade, build in three, five, build in six, eight, to like kind of the final, you know, build in nine, 12. And then obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Science is fantastic, but if people didn't share their science, then we would all be in the dark. Um, yeah. Our disciplinary core ideas, we have our main three kind of science worlds, our physical sciences, our life sciences, and our earth and space sciences. And then we have engineering and technology kind of um, lumped together as well. And then our cross-cutting concepts, like I said, these are themes. The first one is patterns. There are patterns everywhere in science. Um, if we're talking about our life, a life, ugh, life science pattern, if you look at a four week old embryo of any vertebrate on earth, human, fish, 
hamster, whatever, it's going to look exactly the same. That is a pattern. And as they grow, you know, they develop differently. Um, but that is a pattern. In physical science, we have, you know, a billion ma like mathematical patterns. Um, in our earth and space sciences, we have like our geologic rock patterns, um, day, night, um, seasons, uh, day, night, seasons, tides, you know, there's tons of patterns. Um, and then there's also tons of patterns outside of science. Um, mathematics is full of patterns. Algebra is essentially looking for relationships and patterns. Um, we have patterns in literacy. Um, we can look at like poems and rhyming. We can look at even just the uh, words, like how like letter sounds and learning to read patterns in letters and words. Um, patterns in history, there are patterns everywhere. So these really do span um, outside of just science. Cause and effect, you know, again, there is cause and effect is a huge literacy history, mathematics, we can find it everywhere. Um, scale, proportion, and quantity as relates really strongly to mathematics as well, systems and system models, energy and matter, structure and function, stability and change. These are all of our cross-cutting concepts or our themes. So what we're going to do now is take a closer look at both our science and engineering practices and then our cross-cutting concepts. So oh, I keep pushing the arrow and it doesn't go. So our first kind of collaborative activity um, is going to be to look at the science and engineering practices. So we are going to do this on a Jamboard. If you've never used Jamboard, it's pretty um, intuitive. Um, but obviously throw questions in the chat if you have them. So I'm going to open the Jamboard and send you the link in the chat, but then I will come back to this, um, this page so that you can see the kind of sticky note um, key that I've made. Let me make sure before, yes, anyone, okay. Um, so this is what the Jamboard looks like and let me, Send it in the chat. So um, as you're kind of joining in, oh good, someone's in, that means, means it worked. Um, you can see at the top here, there are 10 or eight frames. So there's one frame for each science and engineering practice. You do not need to put you know, four sticky notes on every slide. This is really a, you know, we'll spend 10 minutes doing this, um, a collaborative, just what comes to mind first. Um, and what is listed on each slide is um, the SEP, the expectation for the three to five grade band. So for asking questions and defining problems, the overall expectation by the end of fifth grade, we want our students to progress to specify qualitative relationships. So that for this one science and engineering practice, that is our overarching goal. By the end of fifth grade, we want students to specify qualitative relationships. And then the five bullets are some examples about how we're going to get them there again by the end of fifth grade. Um, and you might be asking like, or thinking it might be helpful to know, well, what are they expected to do before they come to third to fifth grade? Like, what are the K2 expectations? So that's kind of what I was saying in the download materials um, section. It'll take you to um, this page, this uh, digital commons page, and there are all of these additional files and the um, SEP combo handout. And uh, you'll, I'll show you a picture of it kind of after we do this activity, um, has them all listed in order. So you will have all of the um, bullets for K2. So you know what students could kind of, should kind of be coming to you with, three, five, and then six, eight, and nine, 12, if you wanna see where they progress, where this progresses after that. All of these are, um, from the, the K-12 
framework book just kind of this is makes it a prettier view instead of reading it in like paragraph chapter form um so let me go back here um to explain how the Jamboard is going to work so if you want to add a sticky you click this button over here and then there are different colors so use a green sticky note if you have a lesson an idea an activity something you've done in your classroom that is a really good example of the indicators given so if so um like last session for six eight some people said um like that they do like a shark tank kind of pitch thing for engineering um for one of the scps so just throw down anything you're currently doing blue sticky notes are if you notice anything like oh well this indicator is basically talking about patterns so i'm going to just say patterns so that you can think in your mind if i do if i'm working on this sep i can also bring in patterns and kind of you know put those dimensions together pink sticky notes are for useful links or resources if you're talking about and uh arguing engaging an argument from evidence and you have a really good like scientific article website that you use or something like that um throw it down on a pink sticky so that everyone can kind of look at it and have that resources resource and then if you have any comments questions concerns etc um throw it on an orange sticky note what i will do is i'll leave these jam boards live for a day or two and then i will switch them to view only um so you will have the link if, when you go to that digital commons page um you have the presentation and if you just click the jam board image you will have access to the view only file that if you want to come back and be like oh what did people do i really want to work on mathematics and computational thinking what did people do for that um i'll leave it open and viewable so i'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and give you guys about 10 minutes um to just kind of throw stuff on and collaborate um and go ahead and unmute or go in the chat if you have any questions. Okay, so looking through. Let me click through. Yeah, it looks like we have at least a cup, one or two on each slide. Perfect. Um, so instead of just kind of going through, does is there anyone who um, just wants to share uh, one that they a sticky that they put on something that has worked really well or that you're really excited about to see that it like fit really well. Um, feel free to shout out and share. Maybe we can have two or three people share their stickies. In uh, my class, we've been working on, or actually in the school, um, we have like a life science unit where each grade kind of works with, um, we all work with like a bean seed and they're all doing different investigations with it. And then um, depending on their standards for each grade level, and then the fifth graders are going around and they're collecting the data and they're analyzing and comparing all the different classes data and discussing it while the like each group each grade is doing that as well but the fifth grade is kind of taking it for the whole school cool so it's like a really collaborative mm -hmm. like per grade level thing which it's interesting that you say that because um we were a couple of my colleagues and i were talking there's a um 
because we obviously talk a lot about integrative teaching, like, you know, science and math teachers working together, like science and English teachers working together on a unit, you know, things like that. Um, but it is a really interesting model at if you look at schools that um, put grade bands together, whereas, you know, a third grader might be working with a fifth grader on something. And obviously there are some pitfalls there, but just some of the really cool stuff that can come out of that. So yeah, I love that you guys do that. Anyone else? I'm seeing some cool stuff on the developing and using models page. I, I really like the ABCD method um, for models because if not, you that's where you're gonna kind of end up with, you know, maybe a, a circle with like some, I don't know, brown crayon or something. And it's like, oh, it's a planet, um, which actually reminds me of, I, how, I really like that because the importance of drawing, um, drawing is not something that's really mentioned in any of these. Um, but drawing is so, so, so important for that reason. And it all kind of relates back to that um, fear of failure, kind of like we were talking about at the beginning. Um, students are afraid to draw because they're bad at it or they're afraid they'll be judged on their art skills or something like that. But drawing is such a huge part of science. So I love that um, someone put that, that ABCD method of drawing because you should be doing drawings in your um, science classroom, observing things, drawing what a result looked like, um, planning a prototype. These are all things that you can use drawings for. Um, and, with, and with the drawings, it's um, really important to make them label everything too. Yeah. And it helps with the clarity of what they drew for those who are hesitant to draw. Yeah, labeling drawings and um, putting units on numbers is like the bane of every science teacher's existence, I swear. The units on numbers one is like, oh, such a killer. Um, but yeah, so um let's see oh mystery powders for planning and carrying out investigations love mystery powders and interpreting gate sorry i'm clicking through the slides here um oh investigate how much fresh water is on earth i love that um and actually that reminds me too on the page where you can download the materials, that page is our digital commons. It's like IMSA's open educational resource page. If you um, kind of click out of the Institute day stuff, there's all sorts of other downloadable things on our digital common page. You can search, there's a search bar on the side. If you search NGSS, we have um, a suite of NGSS lessons that was paid for by a grant that we wrote for K through five. So there are third, fourth and fifth grade lessons, um, about eight lessons per grade level that have you know really cool, fun, um, three-dimensional activities that are linked to specific standards. Um, and there is a mystery powder one. That's what made me think of that. Um, so, and I can send at the end of the presentation, I can send that in the chat as well, a link directly to the lesson page. Um, yeah, collaborating with math teachers for the math one, perfect. Um, oh, a magnetic racetrack. Per, I, yeah, these are some really cool ideas. Um, and I've actually, because I've never taught third, like K-5, I've been in a middle school and I've but most of my time in high school, it is really interesting to um, see these too. Great. So um, if, are there any, before I move on, any questions, anything about that, um, the SEP kind of section? Okay. So this is what I was talking about um, on the download materials page. There are PDFs for you guys to download of all of these. So um, there's some for the disciplinary core ideas, which again is that content. There's one for each content uh, level, physical, physical life, earth and space, and then engineering. Um, there's 
a downloadable. So there's four DCI ones. There's the SEP one, and then there's the cross cutting concepts one. There's also a downloadable for you guys for um, bookmarks. If you want to print off and just, you know, share with your other teachers, these um, bookmarks that have everything kind of listed out for the NGSS. Um, but it, the middle one on this, on this image is your science and engineering one. And you can see they all go by grade band. So like I said, if you want to know um, what the K2 expectations are for asking questions and defining problems, they are there in that downloadable right next to the three five. So you can kind of, you know, if you're in a K K5 school, um, you could work with the K2 teachers to make sure, you know, there is like they're working on those items so that when your students come into third grade, they have mastered those, you know, it looks like for asking questions, there's three bullet points um, so that they, you are you are prepared in three, five to work on the five um, kind of big ideas of asking questions and, and um, defining problems. So you have access to all of these progression guides. Um, the bullets on these are where, right where I got the Jamboard stuff. And again, how I made these documents was just information straight from this book. Um, but I just like these because I don't know, it's again, easier than reading a whole chapter on it. Um, it's just kind of flipping through this guide. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing um, with the cross-cutting concepts. So five to 10 minutes, the only difference here is that you are going to, um, the blue sticky notes instead of um, listing um, other like, now I can't remember what it was before. And I think it was listing other ideas. You're going to blue, use the blue sticky notes to list non-science ways students might um, learn these things. So like the first cross-cutting con concept is patterns. Where might your students be working on patterns outside of science that you could then maybe kind of link with your science class? So um, let me go ahead and make sure my sharing is good. Yes. Let me send this in the chat. And then there, so you should be able to see, and I see people coming in, excellent. So you should be able to see then, um, so sticky notes, just like before the green are, what are you already doing? What is the lesson that you've done and you love and the kids love it and it fits perfectly with patterns or um, cause and effect or structure and function. Blue, is there something that you do outside of science and math? Um, or anything, you know, literacy that you do that could fit with cause and effect or something else. Pink is resources. I use this. I love it. It works. And orange is anything else. Um, so just like before, let's do like seven minutes, five to seven minutes. Um, and then we will um, come back and finish up. As everyone is contributing to the Jamboard, um, I've just sent in the chat the link to those um, model NGSS lessons. So again, you might be able to use them, might, you might not, but there's K through five, like eight or nine lessons for each grade band um, that are just kind of some cool, fun lessons that really embrace three-dimensional learning. So that being said, um, we can debrief a little bit on this one. I know it's not a ton of time, um, but like I said, I will leave these Jamboards open if you think of something and you wanna come back and throw a sticky note on. And then after a couple of days, I'll make them view only um, just so that it's a resource. And um, when you go to the digital commons page, the like, on the Institute Day website, download session materials, it'll take you to Digital Commons. There's a PDF version of the presentation and the Jamboard like logo is the link. So um, even if you don't save it, you would be able to access it that way. 
if you are really just interested in coming back and seeing some of the um, stuff that uh, all of us have, have written on here. I see someone put a game on patterns. I'm excited to check that out later. I love a good game. Um, I'm seeing a lot of connections for cause and effect because yeah, cause and effect, a very scientific idea is a very everything idea. Um, social studies, language arts, ELA, um, there's there's tons of cause and effect and then a science example of force and motion yeah um it's perfect um scale proportion and quantity is very um relatable to mathematics um systems and system models looking at earth's spheres that's um yeah are we and there's actually a fifth grade um uh activity in the lessons i sent can't remember what it's called, but it has to do with an oil spill and how the oil spill affects each of the spheres, the hydrosphere, um, geosphere, biosphere, um, atmosphere. So excellent. Couple things, um, an energy of sound video, fun. Structure and function is like my favorite cross cutting concept, maybe behind patterns. I like patterns too, but um, I just love structure and function because it's such a simple concept. Like my two year old knows that, you know, he needs to use a spoon to eat his cereal because if he uses a fork, the milk will fall through. And if he uses a knife, he, you know, all these other things. So it's such a simple concept, but it's such, it's like the building block for so many things. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate you guys um, participating in those jam boards. And like I said, I will um, keep them kind of live for a little bit in case you think of something and then I'll switch them to view only, only because I'm not going to monitor them and not that anyone would do anything crazy, but it's just easier to switch it. Um, so we just debriefed there. So let's just end by looking at a specific example performance expectation. So this is one from fifth grade. Um, use models to describe that energy in animals food, which is used for body repair, growth, and motion to maintain body warmth, was once energy from the sun. So there is, you know, kind of your classic um, food web type activity, um, which there is also one linked to this expectation in those NGSS model lessons. Um, but when you're looking at this, they were very intentional in writing these performance expectations so that at least one um, DCI, SCP, and CCC are represented. So when you go to the website, when you mouse over it, it kind of makes those connections for you as I've highlighted here. So use models to describe. That's one of our SEPs is using models as evidence. Um, energy in animals, food, blah, blah, blah. That's, that is a main scientific idea in physical science that energy is transferred. Um, and so we're looking at this energy transfer from food um, and how then it's used in the body. And then was once energy from the sun is this cross-cutting concept. Um, again, of energy transfer. So if you look on the website, it looks something like this, where it explains um, kind of the, the quick to do behind each section and how they come together and to make this performance expectation. And there are more resources and things like that on the website too. Um, similar to this book, I use the NGSS website all the time. So the very last thing, supplemental strategies for implementation. How are you gonna make this work? How are you going to enhance what you're already doing? Um, encourage your students to play. Play is not just for preschool. Um, play is how students learn. Play is how adults learn. When you're having fun, you're learning. Um, so more of that open-ended, more open-ended activities where students can take leadership of their own learning and play um, with ideas, play with materials, play with their own learning. The second thing is tools, if you have them, um, use, use any open technology that you have, whether it's on the computer, 
if um, you have, you know, graphing calculators that the students can toy around with, if you go to the dollar store and buy some, you know, loose parts materials, any kind of tools that your students can use and um, get their hands on are help, helpful. And then kind of to circle back to what we talked about earlier, it's okay to make mistakes. Get rid of the right versus wrong mentality um, in your classroom and encourage that open exploration and bring back those born investigators. So the very last thing um, on the main Institute page, there are two surveys. The IMSA survey is kind of my evaluation for the presentation. So I appreciate getting that feedback, good or bad. I have thick skin. Um, I'm always trying to make my presentations better. The ISBE evaluation is what you fill out to get your um, CPDU for, for this session. And then this QR code links to your materials download um, for the, uh digital commons page so that being said i just want to say thank you so much hopefully um this was a meaningful and collaborative session for you guys that you were able to take something out of now have a good lunch um, and enjoy the rest of your sessions today <laughs>